Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's get started and look into the first article. The first article says Bombay High Court upholds reservation for Marathas. Let's look into the context. The Bombay High Court has upheld the Maharashtra government's decision to provide reservation to the Maratha community under the Socially and Educationally Backward Classes Act of 2018. Let's understand what this whole issue is all about comprehensively. Who are the Marathas? The Marathas are basically the ones who speak the Marathi language and they are one of the politically dominant community in the state of Maharashtra. The Marathas nearly make up about one third of the population in the state of Maharashtra. So historically, they have been also identified as the warrior caste with huge land holdings in their state. This Maratha community had large swathes of land when it comes to the past scenario. But when it comes to the current circumstances, there is division of land. There is agrarian problems and this has been witnessed over the years and this has resulted in a decline of prosperity among the middle class as well as the lower middle class of the Maratha community. So because of the agrarian distress, because they are not able to make profits because of the land, that is why there have been large number of agitations and protests for including this particular community into the bed of reservation. So what we have to understand is the history of the Maratha quota. The demand for the Maratha reservation was first mooted in the early 1980s. Again, in the year 1992, the Maratha Mahasangh had made a representation to the state government to provide some reservation to the community. In the year 2014, the Congress NCP government had brought in an ordinance for 16% reservation but this ultimately failed to meet the legal test. In 2018, there was again large scale protest by the Marathas in the month of November. So the state legislature again passed an act which proposed about 16% of reservation in the educational sector, in the government jobs for this particular Maratha community which then came up with a particular law called as the Social and Educationally Backward Classes Act of 2018. So this SEBC Act of 2018 was then challenged in the Bombay High Court terming it as a violative of the Supreme Court order that reservations in any state cannot exceed 50%. So as this particular case reaches the doors of the Bombay High Court, the Bombay High Court looks into this particular case and it now delivers the judgment. So the Bombay High Court has upheld the reservation for the Marathas in the state. But what is important here is the state government law had made sure that there is a call for about 16% quota. This is caused by the Bombay High Court and it has said that 12% is to be provided for the education and 13% has to be provided for the government jobs and this is in line with respect to the recommendation given by the Maharashtra State Backward Class Commission. Before we look at multiple other angles, let's understand what is the existing quantum of reservation in the state of Maharashtra. Following the 2001 State Reservation Act, the total reservation in Maharashtra is currently at 52% which means it has already breached the 50% mark which has been given by the Supreme Court. So out of which the large quotas are given for the scheduled caste which is about 13%, scheduled tribes 7%, OBCs 19% with the rest going to the special backward class Vimukti Jati and other nomadic tribes as well. The quotas given to the various nomadic tribes as well as specially backward classes in fact have been carved out from the total OBC quota. Now let's go back to the Indra Savni case. A nine judge bench of the Supreme Court had ruled the total reservation to the backward classes could not exceed or go beyond 50%. But Maharashtra is one of those few states which is an exception to this particular rule because in the year 2001 as per the State Reservation Act they had already breached this particular rule and they currently had about 52% of reservation. The addition of another 12% and 13% to the Maratha quota will take the total reservation to about 64 to 65%. This is the current picture. Now let's look into what the Bombay High Court has spoken about this particular judgment. Back in 2010, the Supreme Court came up with an order. It said all those states 
would be able to exceed 50% limit for reservation provided that they would be able to provide solid scientific data to justify the increase which means that the Bombay High Court when it has given and passed this particular judgment has gone back to the Supreme Court order which it delivered in the year 2010. In case there is any state government which has quantifiable data which means that that particular caste that particular community is not represented in the administration and if they have scientific evidence for the same then such reservation can breach 50% is what Supreme Court said way back in 2010 and it is this judgment that has been referred by the Bombay High Court. So what the Bombay High Court currently says is that this particular law passed by the state government is constitutionally valid and it is the legislature which would know the clear picture of who is socially backward. So it puts the onus on the state government that you have done what is right and you have come up with a particular reservation policy which is absolutely right because it is you who would be the best judge about a particular class. So because the state government has come up with some scientific evidences that is why the Bombay High Court has said that you have done the right decision. The court while delivering this particular judgment also examined reports by the previous commissions which had studied the Maratha community. They came to a conclusion that none of the earlier reports that was presented had empirical data. Therefore, there was no chance of scrutiny for classifying Marathas as backward. So the earlier commissions that was appointed by the state government did not include the Marathas under the reservation simply because they did not have any empirical data that was required. But the Maharashtra State Backward Class Commission which had appointed for this particular issue had come up with a scientific analysis based on ground service, collected data from multiple households and it is this statistics that is currently considered and that is the reason we have come up with this particular judgment. According to this Maharashtra State Backward Class Commission, 93% of the Marathas earn less than 1 lakh annually, 37.28% of the community lives below the poverty line, 76.86% of the Maratha families dependent on the agriculture and farm labour earn their sustenance, this could help the state government's claim of scientific data to support the reservation. So all those committees and commissions and their reports which was appointed in the past did not have any empirical data and this particular commission has given enough statistics, enough ground surveys as well as those that have been collected from the household and this will act as a scientific data for the state government. So the state government has every right to provide this reservation is what the bomb Bombay High Court has come up with. It has also said that this particular backwardness of the Maratha community may not be as similar to that of the scheduled caste, as similar to that of the scheduled tribes, but it is almost similar to that of the other backward classes that are prevalent in the state of Maharashtra. So with this particular judgment, it has said that this particular law passed by the Maharashtra government is right but it has also said that 16% has to be reduced to 12% for education and 13% for jobs. So this is the judgment all about. Now let's look at the various issues and concerns that have been spoken under this particular article. Originally, when we look at the constitution, this particular reservation as a policy was envisaged as a temporary tool. This was supposed to uplift the majority of the marginalized communities like the Dalits, the tribals and also create a level playing field because reservations was an affirmative action because of the past violation that has been committed on a particular community this was supposed to provide a level playing field so that they can climb up the economic corridors but this reservation slowly has become an instrument of displaying and seeking political power from social justice which was envisaged in the original constitution its objectives has been expanded currently it became a policy which is acting as a device against backwardness for employment creation and even for power sharing. So the point of discussion is, is this right is what is the question. In recent years, dominant communities, for example, Marathas, the Jats, the Patidars in Gujarat have launched movements seeking for a share of reservation. So what is the problem? If majority of the communities are asking for it, what is wrong when the dominant community is asking for it? The 
point of introspection is instead of addressing all these underlying causes. So what are the underlying causes here? Agriculture is the major issue and people are devastated because they are not able to make profits from agriculture. Because there are issues with agriculture, so what is required is addressing or bringing about changes in agriculture. Then there are students who are studying. These students are studying because they want to get jobs in the formal sector. But what is the major issue? There is no development of jobs in the formal sector. So the idea here is to bring a resolution and bring a reform in the agricultural sector, educational sector, employment provision, but the state and its government is not looking in bringing a reformation in these sectors, but instead it is looking for a shortcut by providing the quotas. Is it the right thing to do? is the point of introspection. Given the fact that government jobs are also shrinking, there is overwhelming competition. The number of seats in the public institutions are also reducing. The competition within this particular community is also increasing. So is reservation the panacea for this particular problem? No. So all these things will have to be looked into and the government will have to bring up structural reforms rather than increasing the quota is another set of argument. Let's look at some of the other key facts. 10 of Maharashtra's 18 chief ministers since the state was founded in 1960 have been Marathas. Four decades till 2004, 55% of the total MLAs were Maratha. Besides powerful Maratha families have large land holdings. They headed 85 of the state's 105 sugar factories, 23 district cooperative banks. Almost all the state's milk cooperatives and cooperative credit institutions were under their control as are half of Maharashtra's private educational institutions. So when you look at all these statistics, you also get to a point that this particular community is well present in the society and they have enough firepower as well as money power to bring about changes within the particular community. Why require reservation is another point of question. So looking at all these issues and concerns, we will have to look, is this the right way to go? Why? Because reservation is not a panacea for the problem. Instead, what we need is structural revolutions, structural programmings and structural reforms that the government will have to come up so that all these different issues that the society is facing is addressed rather than coming up with reservation. Because reservation is not going to serve the purpose is one set of arguments. Let's also look at other state examples. When you look at the state of Tamil Nadu, it currently has a reservation of about 69%, which means even this has breached this particular barrier of 50%. So what is the future course of action? Both the advocates, one standing for the state, the other against the reservation for the Maratha community are planning to go up to the Supreme Court. Why? Because the one standing for the state field that 16% was the law that was given by the Maharashtra government. But the Bombay High Court has currently slashed it and reduced it to 12% as well as 13%. So it is planning to go to the Supreme Court so that it is coming back to 16% as originally framed by the Maharashtra government. The advocates from the opposition are also planning to go up to the Supreme Court simply because it is breaching the 50% which the Supreme Court had laid in the Indra Savani case. So let's wait and watch if this particular case goes up to the Supreme Court and what the judgment of the Supreme Court is all about. Now let's look into the next article. This article says National Mission on Natural Language Translation Soon. Let's understand what this issue is all about. English happens to be the primary medium of higher education in India. But this language is inaccessible to the literate provision of number of states in India. Why? Because majority of the literates in India are locally native. So they know the local language, they know the native language, but they have no idea about English. So it means they are missing on large amount of content, large information, which is accessible in English. So in order to make sure there is a translation material in all fields like the literary, technical, scientific and business, this particular national mission on natural language translation has been taken up. So how will this mission help? So basically what is happening under this mission is, there is translation of one particular literature 
to another native language which means there is translation which is acting not only as an instrument of democratizing knowledge but it also means it is empowering those people so the literature which is currently in english will be transformed into another native language which will make the information as well as knowledge available to all people in different languages it will also educate and empower the citizens to remove the barriers which they face in accessing the information so what is the aim of this particular program the aim is to make science and technology accessible to all by facilitating access to teaching and researching material bilingually in english and in one of the native indian languages how will this be done this will be achieved by a combination of machine translation as well as the human translation there will be a complex set of softwares that will be built and these software as well as machine language will be coded such that the english language is translated into the native language this will also take the acceptance of the human presence manually where they would also convert this english language into the native language so this would include the speech to speech machine translation as well as text to text machine translation another important point is with respect to the implementing agency which is the ministry or the department which will be implementing this particular program so the ministry of electronics and it will be the implementation of the machine along with the ministry of human resource development and the department of science and technology but why was this mission taken up that is because the prime minister science and technology innovation and advisory council has found that there is a major dearth when it comes to information accessibility in the native language so this body will then identify all these challenges and bring up solutions to these challenges and this will be given to the prime minister and the prime minister will initiate the change so that there is more advancement when it comes to science and technology so what is the significance of this particular scheme so the translation activities can now help generate the employment for all the educated unemployed in india this will also help the students the teachers the authors the publishers the translating software developers as well as general readers to have huge amount of information that is translated from english to the native language so this is the significant aspect of this particular program that is why this particular program has been taken up by the government and will be executed executed in the future so this is what we need to know in reference to this article now let's look into the next article this article says new supreme court roster allows top 5 judges to hear pil cases before we understand what this issue is let's understand the meaning of master of the roster roster in simple layman means it is a system it is a system to allocate different tasks to all members in order to achieve higher efficiency so what is the master of the roster it refers to the privilege of the chief justice to constitute benches to hear cases so it is the chief justice of india as well as the chief justice of the high court who is given that administrative power where it is he who will say it is this particular judge it is this particular bench which will hear a particular case that is come in front of the supreme court or in front of the high court let's understand some of the laws as well as judgments according to supreme court rules 2017 chapter 5 powers duties and functions of the registrar under rule 29 express states that registrar shall prepare roster under the directions of the chief justice of india and all such powers duties and functions of the registrar are subjected to any further special or general orders of the chief justice of india so the registrar will prepare the roster and this is on the words that have been given by the chief justice of india so it is the chief justice of india who will say that this particular case will be going up to that particular bench or the number of judges and it is these judges after given by the chief justice of india will hear that particular case the state of rajasthan was prakash chand also clearly defines that regarding the matters of the high court the chief justice is the master of the roster so for the chief justice of india is the one who will give all these cases to that particular bench and it is the chief justice of that particular high court who will also allocate cases to the judges in the high court what is the present context so according to the present context chief justice of india ranjan gogoi has notified a new roster of work which said 
top five judges of the apex court will be hearing the public interest litigation matters why is this important because when it comes to the earlier protocol the pil matters were notified to be heard only by the chief justice of india and the second senior most judge so it was the chief justice of india and the next senior most judge who would hear the pil cases when it comes to the earlier instance but currently this has been changed and now what we have is the chief justice of india and four senior most judges who will also listen to this particular pil petitions this is what this article all about rest of the other things is not of importance for your prelims as well as main so we don't have to discuss about it another important concept with respect to the entire discussion of what this master of the roster is already uploaded on our youtube so kindly look into it and relevant link for the same will also be given in our description box now let's look into the next article this article says at the high table this is speaking about the non permanent membership of the united nations security council we have discussed about this particular issue on our yesterday cna but there are three important pointers that this article speaks about let's try and understand what are the three pointers that this article speaks about currently when you look into the number of permanent members you have five in number united states of america united kingdom then you have france which form one power block then there is russia and china who are other permanent members who have another power block so these two power blocks that we currently see in the united nations security council has created a polarizing environment in united nations security council so this article says that india will have to balance these two power blocks it has to balance the united states of america united kingdom and france on one side it also has to balance balance russia and china on the other side so india will have to balance both these sides is one such recommendation given under this particular article then there was a time where the world was led by the united states of america as well as the ernst while ussr currently when you look at the present context this is dominated by china as well as the united states of america both these countries are not complying by the rules of the united nations yes currently we have the multipolar world which also means they'll have to comply by the rules and the global rule order but both united states of america and china are not listening to the united nations they are taking up all the responsibilities and acting unilaterally so because of such unilateral actions taken by united states of america and china india must consider how it will strengthen the multilateral world order so currently both these countries are not complying with the rules of the united nations but india will have to ensure it does a balancing act in this particular multipolar world the third important challenge that india also has is currently we have five permanent members what india will also have to ensure is it will also have to bring about the reform as well as the expansion of the united nations security council so that india can also be a permanent member and can claim a permanent seat at the high table so what it means is that india has three important job roles to be performed one balancing the two power blocks managing china and united states of america so that they don't take up unilateral decisions and also ensuring that it itself becomes a part of the permanent seat holder in the united nations security council but for the rest of the updates we have already discussed yesterday on our cna now let's look into the next article this article is speaking about a policy to regulate coaching centers let's understand some of the statistics as given under this particular article data from the national sample survey office 71st round revealed that more than a quarter of indian students that is about 7.1 crore take private coaching this is a huge number around 12% of a family's expenses go towards private coaching across the rich and poor families and when you look at quota there have been number of students who have been committing suicides in spite of all these pressures in spite of number of death that we have witnessed in number of years what we still see is the number of students who are going up to quota has not reduced so what we have to understand is why are coaching classes very important why is it become so important for the students what purpose do coaching institutions serve in the society with the ever growing population 
and very few jobs in the society. One has to be very sharp and he'll have to work very hard to crack a particular entrance examination. The raising competition between all these students has also made these examination sitting boats to ensure that the difficulty level over a period of time has increased. Why? Because more the difficulty, they would be able to gauge the strength of the students and they want the best students to enter the best college within India. So what this has also resulted is that students will have to work really hard. And what do they do? They will have to ensure that they are able to get enough marks so that they are meeting the criteria and the merit that has been set by this particular board. So because the difficulty level of these exams are increasing over a period of time and also because the merit call and the merit cutoff is very high, that is why this requires immense preparation. So this is not an easy task. In most of the cases, this is not also achievable without the support and guidance of the experienced and knowledgeable mentor. Because there is dearth of mentors in the colleges as well as in the current arena, in the current education system, that is why students are going up to the coaching centers. So it is the lack of guidance and the mounting uncertainty in the exam pattern that is letting the coaching centers flourish in the current market. So the next question is, what are the various laws that these institutions will have to comply by? The first basic fundamental law that all these coaching institutions will have to come under is the Shops and the Establishment Act. When you are speaking about the normal institutions, if it is a very small institute which is run by a single person, they don't have to comply under this particular law. But if it is a major institution where there are large number of faculties addressing large number of institutions, then such institutions will be falling under the Shops and the Establishment Act. Under this particular system, there is a license which is given by the inspector of that particular area under this particular act. So license will have to be given by this local community, local organization under the Shops and the Establishment Act. So this trade license or the business license is basically nothing but a permit for that particular institution given by the government authorities which will enable that individual or that organization to conduct the business within that particular government's jurisdiction. So what is it? He has to get a license under the Shops and the Establishment Act so that he is able to run the institution. But this particular article also voices certain concerns when it comes to the coaching centers. What are these various concerns? The first key concern that this article speaks about is it arrests the creative freedom. Coaching institutes basically aim to train students specifically for the examination. Hence, they prepare them extensively for gaining competitive edge, failing to understand the need, the want, the wishes and aspirations of the people. So instead of focusing on what the students want, they are only focused on meeting that particular benchmark that has been set by the competitive board. They are not inculcating any scientific rationale but instead working on shortcuts, the ways to crack the examination rather than igniting the spirit of scientific temperament. The whole purpose of education is to ensure that there is scientific temperament which is infused into that particular student but instead what is being the approach of the coaching centers is not the scientific temperament but all those shortcuts that are being taught to that particular person so that he is just able to crack this particular examination. This particular coaching institute also kindles the psychological disorders. Why and how? That is because there is already the mainstream education. There is a large section of people who basically believe that the mainstream education is not right. They are not able to meet the intended standards. They have created such a hal environment that they have ensured that only when they meet up a private institution, a coaching institution, that is when they'll be able to flourish. A kind of hysteria, a kind of an action plan is so much put in the environment that students are complied to go to the private institutions rather than restricting themselves only to the mainstream education. As a creation of such an environment, this has resulted in developing anxiety and exam stress in the students. When you look at the next key concern voiced in this particular article is the laws that are prevalent in the society right now and the government and its missionary is very ambiguous. 
So what the author says here is there is no law and even if there are laws, they are in grey area and very ambiguous. There are no rules, there are no regulations that are governing the private coaching institutes explicitly. The building laws that are laid to all these institutions are repeatedly violated. The local safety laws that are supposed to be practiced is not again practiced and this ultimately means that the fundamental rights of the students have been violated. How? This has been drawn in reference to the Surat fire tragedy. When it comes to the Surat fire tragedy, the building laws, the terrace laws as well as fire norms were not practiced and as a result number of students were killed and it means that there is a violation of article 21 where there is loss of life and article 21 guarantees the right to life. So this particular article says the building in Surat had an illegally constructed terrace. It had a wooden circus that got burnt thus disabling any possibility of escape thereby violating the fundamental right of that particular student. So what this article says is there have been various steps that have been taken by the state governments. They have passed laws to regulate the coaching industries. Centers have to register with respect to the government and also meet the basic requirements. But is it being implemented? Yes, there are laws that the state governments have come up with. But when it comes to its execution and implementation, are they meeting all these laws? Currently, when you look at another aspect, there is also a private coaching centers regulatory board bill 2016, which is also being discussed. There is also a public interest litigation that is filed in the Supreme Court on regulating the coaching institutions when it comes to all these basic aspects going forward if there is a law it has to ensure that there is apt implementation and execution is what this article all about now let's look into some of the prelims practice question Vespasaurus paranesis recently seen in news is a desert based carnivorous dinosaur why have we picked this up that is because there is an article on Hindu which says desert dwelling carnivorous dinosaur bones found in Brazil this is a desert based carnivorous dinosaur it used claws to capture small prey 90 million years ago the Vespasaurus was a threpod a group of two-footed meat-eating dinosaur that included the better known Tyrannosaurus as well as Velociraptor so now let's look into the next practice question with reference to Maharaja Ranjit Singh he was given the title Sher e Punjab because he stemmed the tide of Afghan invaders in Lahore the Maharaja was known for his just and secular rule he had employed a large number of European officers which of the above statements are correct the answer to this is one two and three why have we picked this up because there is an article on hindu which is honoring an iconic punjab maharaja let's look into the next practice question the gulf of tonkin is a region between Vietnam and China. Let's look into the map for the same. So the Gulf of Tonkin is a region between Vietnam as well as China. Let's look into the next practice question. With reference to Agni 4 mission, which of the following statements is correct? It is a surface to surface missile. Yes, this is right. It is fueled by liquid propellant only. This is wrong. It is solid propellant. It can deliver 110 nuclear warheads about 7500 kilometer away this is again wrong because it is 4000 kilometer away so the answer for this is one only let's look into the mains practice question reservation served as an important social purpose in independent india but more of same is no longer a solution critically examined so please write all your answers on the comment section and peer review amongst yourself so that you get various dimensions with respect to this article in case you have liked our initiative and want to encourage us more please do subscribe and like our videos this is it for today thank you for watching